Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about the strategy behind how to migrate your team's communication into Asana. This is going to be a little bit different to my normal screen sharing videos where I'm very tactical and I show things in Asana. Instead, I'm going to focus more on how do we actually get your team to make a behavioral change and make Asana its primary tool for communication. I'm going to start by talking about the benefits of communicating in Asana, but if you'd like to skip ahead to the actual tips, you can use the chapter markers down below. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And finally, if you would like help setting up your Asana account in the best way, optimizing it for your business, or maybe you just want us to do that training for you so we can onboard your team successfully from day one, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. So let's start by talking about some of the benefits of communicating in Asana. Firstly, there are big efficiency benefits to gain by bringing communication into a tool where you actually manage your work. Remember, Asana is a tool where you set up your tasks and your projects. So it's where you and your team go to see what are we doing and who's doing what within this project. When you bring conversations into a task or into the project itself, now there's less tool switching going on. It means you don't have to switch back and go searching through emails or searching through tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams to go and find those old conversations. I find those tools prioritize recency. More recent messages are generally more visible, you see those first, which isn't very helpful if you want to go back and find a conversation from last week. Whereas Asana organizes everything by task. And so when I sit down and I click on a task, I can see the conversation that's taken place and I'm not having to go searching through tools to find what did we talk about within the context of this work. Communicating in Asana also makes your conversations more task centric. When we communicate primarily in email, Slack, or Teams, conversations can get a bit off topic. But when you communicate in Asana, you're actually commenting inside of a task, and so you're always being reminded about what is the actual work or task we're trying to complete. And I find this actually makes your conversations more productive because you're all talking about how do we move this task forward. And finally, communication in Asana is more asynchronous. Tools like Slack and Microsoft Teams often display an alert throughout the day, and it can be quite distracting, especially if you're somebody who wants to really get into the zone and focus on their work. These distractions can be quite annoying. Whereas with Asana's inbox, a notification comes in, but it's up to you to go and check the inbox when the timing is right for you. And I think this contributes to more productive workflows because you're not constantly being distracted by messages. So those are what I consider some of the main benefits of communicating in Asana. Now let me give you some tips on how to actually migrate your team's communication into Asana. And firstly, it starts with training your team and actually making sure people have the technical understanding of how to communicate and what are the different options for communicating in Asana. Now, of course, this is an area where we can help. We do team training sessions all the time. So click the link in the description below if you are interested in learning more about our Asana support options. But let me show you briefly a couple of ways that we can communicate in Asana. So there are a few different places you can communicate in Asana. Firstly, and I would say this is the primary place we usually communicate, at least in my team, is inside of a task. So here's a task from one of my projects. If I scroll to the bottom, this is the conversation thread for this particular task. Each task has its own conversation where we can talk about what we need to do related to that particular task. Down at the bottom here, I always like to highlight the collaborators. These are the people who are essentially CC'd on the task. These people will be notified if I post a comment in here. And most people are familiar with the idea of at mentioning people to direct your comment at a particular person. So those are your task comments. Now each project also has a messages area where you can communicate at the project level if your comment or update isn't really specific to any individual task. And then we've got at the team level, if I go to my teams and then the messages area here, we can communicate at the team level. If I want to send a message or communicate to my entire team where the message is not specific to any one particular project. It's also really useful to use this like button to show people when you've actually seen their comment. So if I go to my inbox here, you'll see that Lindsay has liked this task. 
that's really useful because it tells me she's seen the task or she can uh, she's seen my comment and I actually know that she's she's seen it and she's um, she's good with it. One final place we can communicate is I can also just send a private message. If I just want to send a message to someone, I can write the subject, I can type the name of the person and I can type my message. And so this would just be sending them a message. It's not really specific to a task. We're just having a conversation and uh, we can now go back and forth. Now, when you're showing people some of those options and some of the places you can actually communicate in Asana, it's worth also having a conversation about how Asana fits in alongside other tools that you might use. We all still need to use email. And what I've told my team is that we're going to use email for communicating with clients and external parties. We, where we use Asana is if we're communicating internally as a team. If we're following up with one another about a task or if you need help with something, we do all of that in Asana. So really our email is primarily for just communicating with external parties or for conversations that aren't related to work that's already in Asana. If you use a tool like Microsoft Teams or Slack, some of these more instant messaging type of tools, you may want to think about, well, do we still even need that tool or what's the use case for it? Sometimes teams that we work with still want to use Slack because it's quite good for those real time back and forth conversations where I just want to quickly talk to you, see if you're available, get some quick feedback. And if I don't necessarily need to keep that conversation in a task in Asana, then Slack or Microsoft Teams may still have a use case in your business. But I always emphasize that if we're talking about a task or a project that we're working on, let's keep that in Asana. What's most important at this stage is to clearly communicate how and when to use each tool so that we don't confuse people and spread out our conversation conversations across too many tools. It's also really important to show people how to use their inbox, which they can find up here on the sidebar. This is where people get notified about updates to tasks that they are a collaborator on, and it's where they're going to see comments and conversations. For example, I can see this new comment from Warwick here. Again, I'm going to like that to show that I've seen this comment, if that's a good best practice to follow. Now, I can respond down here if I need to, but once I'm done with this notification, if I don't need to see or deal with this anymore, the important step that a lot of people don't don't follow is you need to archive the notification. Now that doesn't archive the task, the task is still there. I've just archived the notification that I received, which I can still go back and find in my archive here. But that's something I need to do is to archive those notifications as I go so that I can clear out my inbox and that way I can easily identify new notifications as they come in. I also like to show people some of the notification settings that you can customize. I've turned off email notifications because the email notifications can get quite overwhelming if there's lots of activity going on. So rather than getting email updates, I work primarily in my, I always work in my Asana inbox and I deal with the notifications there. Now, once you've shown people some of those tips, different places to communicate in Asana, how to use the inbox, I recommend putting a date on the calendar, which is when you're going to go live or make that change or transition into Asana and you tell your team, right, have a play for the rest of this week, you know, just get comfortable with it. And then when we come in on Monday or whenever you decide, that's the day where we're all going to commit to having a soap Asana open on our computers. We're all going to be checking our inboxes throughout the day and we're all going to start using Asana as our primary method of communicating from that day. I find that by really drawing a line in the sand, putting a date on making that change helps to clearly communicate to the team that this is an important change that we are making on this day and it helps with that transition. So those are some of my tips for bringing communication into Asana. My team and I have been communicating in Asana for years and I really couldn't imagine working any other way at this point. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.